So you run Windows. It does basically everything you need it to do, but you're tired. Tired of relying on something so limited, so corporate. You want Linux, but you're not quite ready to dive in full force. There may be some game or a professional application that you absolutely need a Windows installation for, but the time is now. That is time to move your primary workflow over to Linux. Hello everybody, this is Tekka. In this video, what we're gonna be doing is dual booting the worst with the best, in my opinion, that is Windows with Fedora. Throughout this video, I'm gonna be giving off a couple disclaimers and things you might want to pay attention to, so make sure you try to watch this thing all the way through. The primary thing in involving the uh, first step of this process is going to be partitioning our drive. Now, if you're going to be doing this on two separate drives, which is definitely the recommended procedure, uh, you can kind of ignore this first step. There are going to be timestamps below. So if you have the option to have like two NVMe SSDs in whatever computer you're going to be doing this on, you're going to have a a uh, better time as the actual Windows and Linux installations are going to be separated. If you are going to be doing this on Windows here with the exact same partition that is installed on Windows, you run a little bit more risk. Windows has been known to not play very friendly with Linux installations, especially after updates and things like that. Generally, it's unlikely you're going to have issues, but just note that they can occur. Before you move on to this first process, before you do anything, with partitioning, it is always a very good idea to back up any important data, whether that be project files, personal media documents, anything like that. Put it in the cloud, put it on a external hard drive or a USB, just in case if something goes awry. But first we have to thank the sponsor of today's video, ProtoArc. The XK01 is a tri-fold keyboard that is an excellent addition to your home lab or even your daily carry. It features a compact build, strong folding mechanisms, and Bluetooth with three separate connections and scissor switch keys that feel awesome to type on. If I were to compare them to something, it would be the feel of a like a MacBook Air, but even a little better. And you can pair this with their EM01 wireless RGB trackball mouse. I have larger hands and this thing is perfect for me. It has one USB channel and two separate Bluetooth connections. The trackball scrolls smooth and this was my first time using one of these and I do think I like it better than some of the other ergonomic solutions that I've tried out. ProtoArc has some other awesome products that are definitely worth checking out. I even went ahead and replaced my mechanical keyboard for one of their Ergo split keyboards. If you're at all interested in checking any of this out, there will be a link down below. Now with that, we are going to jump into the first step and that is actually giving a place for Linux to install. And we're gonna be doing this in partition, create and format hard disk partitions options from our control panel. If you just search partitions, you could go ahead and find it right here. In here, disk zero, that's probably the disk you're gonna to want to use. You could check that by seeing one of the partitions here is the actual C drive, and this is the drive that has our Windows installation. Additionally, you'll see the EFI system partition and the recovery partition. This should be what a normal Windows 11 installation looks like. Now, for installing it, Linux on the same drive as Windows, we want to get this C partition right here and shrink it down a little bit. And to do that, what we're gonna do is right click and go to shrink volume. It's gonna load up here. And then when it does, we have some options. Now you're gonna to wanna to pay attention to a lot of this. Right here is total size before shrink, size available to shrink, and the amount of space that you're gonna want basically available to your Linux installation is what you're gonna input right here. One thing to keep note of, if we open up our file explorer, go over to this PC, you can see I'm using hardly any of my C drive here. If this thing's like almost full, you're gonna wanna be pretty careful. You're gonna wanna make sure and give Windows a little bit of wiggle room when you do this. I would say at least 30 gigabytes or so. So for me, I'm probably gonna be cutting off about this much. I'm gonna be giving my Linux installation about 128 gigabytes of space, which will leave us plenty of room in our Windows partition. So this is just under a 500 gigabyte drive. We should be good to go. So I'm gonna close that out. Right here, this is in megabytes, so I can do one, two, eight, zero, zero, zero. That's 128 gigabytes. And you can see here the total size after shrink is gonna be just about 360 gigabytes left for our Windows partition, which should be enough. Like I said, give Windows some wiggle room, especially on like updates and stuff, it tends to take, take up a quite a bit of space. So from there, we're just gonna click on shrink. Now before, 
we do that, I'm going to say again, backup anything that is important to you. So shrink, and then you're going to give it some time and that's going to give us a pretty decent visual representation of what's going on. You can see our new 125 gigabyte partition. And then that is our C drive right here. Now, if we open up the file explorer again, go to this PC, you're going to see that changed. Now we have less space available to us on our C drive. That is because we have some unused space that we can give to Linux in a little bit. And before we move on to the next step, one thing I really need to know is things like this change a lot. So go down to the comments, check the pinned comments, check the description before you completely follow this guide. It's kind of important as things change, as we've saw recently, the uh, previous methods in which I used to do this is no longer. So with that said, I'm gonna go ahead and close this out. And now what we're gonna do is actually burn our USB. You're gonna to wanna to get a USB just like this one here. This is a 64 gigabyte USB, kind of a necessary, I'd recommend using a eight, minimum of four gig. So we're gonna pop that on in. And now what we're gonna do is head over to our web browser. There are two primary tools for doing this. One of them is Rufus, which is what I personally recommend. Here we go. And the other is Etcher. I've definitely had the most success with Rufus, so I'll have this linked down below. You just go to the website, try to battle through all the various ads everywhere, and then right here, download the latest version. Now in a effort to save some time, I already have this downloaded right here, Rufus. So I'm gonna give that an open, click on run, and here is the application. Now, before we dive too far into there, we're gonna go on to go back to our web browser and we're gonna to wanna to grab Fedora. Now, the, all the same processes that we're doing here should work with Ubuntu and a few others, but I'm gonna be specifically focusing on Fedora for this video. And I will note here that we're gonna be doing this with secure boot disabled. Fedora technically can be installed on a system with secure boot enabled, but you may run into issues and it's kind of hardware specific depending on your hardware. But I am gonna kinda have to preface this by saying disabling secure boot is disabling an additional security feature. So go ahead and do that at your own risk and I will be leaving some resources down below. But just note with dual booting especially or with just using Windows distributions on your system. It's gonna play a lot better with that with that disabled. So Fedora Workstation is what you're gonna to want to download. Just click on download now. And here you could go ahead and grab the Fedora 36 Live ISO. I'm gonna know here, depending on the actual desktop environment you are gonna want, you might want to go with one of the other spins. I prefer Gnome, I prefer just regular good old vanilla Fedora. So that's what we're gonna be doing in this video. However, if you are interested on learning more about various Fedora based distributions and some of the spins, I have a really nice video on that. So I already got Fedora downloaded. What we're gonna to want to do is go over here into Rufus. This is our device. It might say something else for you, but match it up to the drive letter and the size that you went ahead and plugged in. Make sure it's proper because when we do this, it's gonna completely wipe everything on this USB. Boot selection, disk or ISO image is perfect. You're gonna to want to click on select and go ahead and select the Fedora ISO image that you just downloaded. So from here, we have partition scheme. Now we are gonna be doing this on UEFI. I have an older video that does this with legacy BIOS, but definitely if your hardware is modern in the sense of like the last 10 to eight years, UEFI is probably going to be the best option for you. MBR, as you can see, supports both, and you are gonna to wanna to make sure you boot into UEFI when you get into the actual device selection boot options. And if you know you have hardware that supports UEFI and you've checked with like your motherboard manual and it does and you're not seeing that, you may have to do this with GDP, but you should be fine doing this with the MBR partition scheme. So down here, format options, you can give it a label if you want to, this is gonna be fine. Large FAT32 and 32 kilobytes, all those options are gonna be perfect. So let's start that. We're gonna to want to write this in ISO mode, hit okay, and it's giving us the warning. I just said all the data on this device is going to be completely wiped. So if you used this USB to backup data, don't. <laughs> Put, put, put the data somewhere else. So we're gonna go ahead and hit okay and begin the flashing process of this drive. And then when it is done, it's going to say ready right here and we're ready to actually boot into this USB. And I will note here, we're gonna restart our computer and before even the post screen comes up, you're gonna to have to hit a key to get into your BIOS. Now, depending on your hardware, once again, this can be escape, it can be delete, or it can be any of the keys on your function key. Let's go ahead and power down this machine. You should restart it. I unplugged it, but plug that back in, power her up, and I'm going to spam the uh, appropriate key while this begins to boot up. Here we go, we are in our 
BIOS. So first things first, you're gonna want to go over here, security, that's the security, and then go down here to secure boot. You can see I already have it disabled. Depending on your heart, you, you could try to do this with secure boot, but like I said, it, it might not work out for you. It's very hardware dependent and there's certificates that it needs to work properly. It's kind of a hassle. It does add security. So again, do note that if you're gonna be disabling secure boot, you take full liability <laughs> with that most important. We're gonna go down here to our boot options and I'm going to change this to this option right here, UEFI Kingston Data Traveler. That is the USB I have plugged in. So we're going to select that. You're not gonna have those other Fedora boot options. I've tested this a few times to make sure to make sure that it worked. So from there, let's go ahead and save changes and reset. And now that that is our primary boot, option it should go ahead and boot into this usb for us which as you can see it has i do recommend you test the uh media but i'm just gonna save some time here and boot right into fedora take the risks and then we can see it booting up here so when we are in what we're gonna want to do is just jump straight into the installation beforehand you would be able to do a lot of the uh shrinking of volumes and whatnot directly through the fedora installation but windows made it so you have to do it through Windows. So language, pick your proper language. I'm gonna go with English. Keyboard is English US. Time, date zone is automatically selected. If you do need to change that, just give that a tap. Pick your right time zone, click done. And now here's going to be the important stuff. This is your installation destination. Go ahead and select this. You can see right here, this is our hard drive and we can see that we have 125 gigabytes free. If you have that selected, go automatic, hit done, you should be fine. It should recognize where the free space is and only install on that free space. But just in case, if you're not comfortable doing that, we could always click custom over here and then click on done. And this is gonna open up an additional menu here. This will kind of give you a better visual representation of what it's actually gonna do instead of clicking automatic. If we go with under unknown here, we can see a lot of our Windows stuff. So that's an EFI partition. We have some NTF partitions, which like this is our main Windows partition right here. And we have some others. But what I'm gonna do is have it do a lot of the dirty work for me under new Fedora 36 installation. It says, if you haven't created any mount points, as your Fedora 36 installation yet, you can click here to create them automatically. Let's go ahead and do that. Give that a click. And then there we go. We have data system automatically formatted or automatically partitioned out our home, our boot, our main root directory, as well as our new boot EFI partitions. And then you can see down here, it is keeping all the unknown, which is actually our Windows installation here. If you want a little more peace of mind to see exactly what it is doing. So after you click that and you see all these that it's automatically gonna create for us, we could go ahead and select done. It's gonna give us a quick rundown of everything that it's going to do. You could review it to make sure everything seems right for you and accept these changes. And you can see custom partitioning selected. Again, using auto will probably work fine, but I don't trust it all the time. And I kind of want to see what it's doing beforehand. That's why I go into custom. So from here, we can begin the installation. Again, I'm going to duly note, make sure you backed up anything on that Windows, uh, Windows partition that may be of great value to you, just in case. So begin installation. And now it's going to run through the process, depending on your hardware, your USB and all that jazz, it can take anywhere from three to 10 minutes, roughly. And just like that, it is complete. So I'm going to hit finish installation here, which is really just going to close out Anaconda, which is the name of the application that we just used to install Fedora. And let's go up here and actually shut this down properly. So power off, log out, restart and restart. So. I'm gonna go ahead, pull out, there's a USB real quick here, so it doesn't try to boot into it. And now it should take us into the Grub Boot menu. Here we are, we can see we have some options. We have Fedora Linux at the 5.17 kernel, might be something different for you, but we also have the Windows Boot Manager. So at the moment, Fedora is the default and Windows can be selected upon boot. I'm gonna go and select Fedora. I'm gonna be showing you a quick tip how to change that if you want to preference Windows over Linux, vice versa. But once we get in here and get it set up, there's one thing we're gonna want to do for sure, and that is uh, setting our clock settings so Windows and Linux doesn't try to interfere with each other. 
Welcome to Fedora 36. Let's go ahead and start the setup real quick and get through this. Pretty sure I'm in the internet, so I'm gonna go ahead and skip that for now. Uh, sure, they can have all that. Let's enable third-party repos because I'm actually gonna be using this uh, installation here. Uh, let's go ahead and skip all these online accounts. We gotta do this. Brandon, and then let's go next. Password, make sure it's moderately strong. Next, and all done. We can go ahead and start using Fedora Linux. So if you want to, you could take the tour. I don't need the tour. I'm gonna to say no thanks for now. Now, before anything, let's go ahead and open up the terminal and make sure we eliminate possible conflicts. The main thing is Ubuntu Fedora Linux keeps time in UTC or universal time, while Windows on the other hand uses local time. And because of this, there can be a conflict. So what we're gonna do is switch over Linux to use local time. And this all has to do with your uh, motherboard and hardware clock. So the command is going to be time date CTL, date and CTL. And we're gonna to want to set this as locale dash or one dash dash adjust system clock. Just like that, hopefully I typed that right. I didn't, I'm not shocked. We want system local RTC, real time clock. So I think that's real time clock, enter. There we go. So now we're good to go. Now you're completely done and you could go ahead and watch my video on the five things to do after you install Fedora. But one thing that is not included in that video that I do specifically recommend for dual booting is getting the Grub Customizer. I hope it's in software, we will see. Oh boy, oh boy, oh howdy. Got a bunch of updates. Before we do that, let's see if we could grab this. Ugh, oh no. I should be able to install it on the terminal. Again, I'll leave all these commands and resources and everything down below. Pseudo DNF, which if you don't know, DNF is the primary package manager in Fedora. Generally, most tools you can install via the graphical utility via Flatpak or the, their repositories. Pseudo DNF install, and I just grub customizer. I'm a little, uh, I'm a little bit too unsure about some of these things to be making videos. And one thing you'll notice, the DNF is painfully slow. There are things you could do to speed it up, which again, I do mention in that video on uh, the things to do after installing Fedora. This is also the first pull through the repository, so it generally takes a little while longer the first time than most other times. There it is, Grub Customizer. You want to hit Y and Enter. And there we go, it's a pretty small application. It takes more time to find it in the repositories than it does to actually install it. Grub customizer. It's going to be doing some system configurations. So we're going to need to input our password. And then right here we have our list configuration. And you'll see here that right now we don't see Fedora for some reason. And really only worry about this if you want to make Windows the primary because we're going to have to do something in the uh, grub configuration here. So for now, I'm going to go ahead and close that quit without updating. And what we're going to want to do is once again, open that terminal again, only do this if you want to make Windows a priority, which even saying that kind of hurts. sudo, which stands for super user do, only run sudo if you either know what you're doing or you trust somebody like me. And we're gonna edit the grub config manually real quick. So we're gonna do that in Etsy, default and grub. Hit enter, type in your password. Again, make sure you type things right, enter and go down to this very last option and set this to false. Basically, I think it's after Grub or not Grub. After Fedora 30, they started using this, which isn't fully compatible with Grub Customizer, but Control O, exit, Control X, to get out of there. And to reload Grub, it's different than Ubuntu systems, or at least in Fedora, it's different than Ubuntu systems. So we're gonna wanna type in sudo grub2 dash mk for make config dash o and we're going to want to do this in boot efi capital efi and then fedora and grub dot cfg hit enter and then you can see it did some things we found the windows boot manager did found a lot of our linux images and added some boot entries so it should have updated or we might need to restart our computer we'll see grub customizer type in our password and now, whoop, whoops. And now we can see we have the Windows Boot Manager right here and Fedora Linux. So if I wanted to prioritize Windows, all I would do is click on this and move it up. So move up selected entry, boom, boom, there we go. 
And if you want to, you can mess around with some of the other settings. So we have a visibility, how long we want to see these boot options. So if you want to give yourself a little more than five seconds, you could bump this up here as well. And then under appearance settings, you could change the two if you'd like. But for me, I'm gonna go ahead and click on save and it's gonna go ahead and update that configuration. And then when we reboot, unlike the first time we booted into this, we're gonna see Windows as our first option. So let's close that out and restart and make sure that it, it works. <laughs> and I'm gonna not install pending updates because I wanna make sure everything's good to go first. This is the only thing I did not try before recording this video. <laughs> All right, there we go. So now we can see Fedora Linux here, Windows Boot Manager was the first selected option. So if I just didn't touch anything, it would automatically boot into Windows. And just to show you that our Windows installation is gonna be fine, we'll boot into it. And there we go, looking good. Type in your password. And now you will be in Windows. And now just for giggles, let's go ahead and open up the very first application we were in, which is the Create Partitions. And you, we're gonna see some uh, some changes here. We have an additional partition here, which let's go ahead and make this a little bit bigger. We have this partition here, and then you can see that this is another primary partition, which this is actually our Linux partition. So. I do hope you enjoyed this video. I really do hope it helped you out if this was something you were trying to accomplish. With all of that, for about the third time, watch that other video on some of the things to do once you install Fedora. Uh, big thank you to the sponsor of today's video, uh, Proto Arc and their uh, keyboards. This is cool. I've had it in my backpack for some time and been using it with uh, my ThinkPad laptop. And I've actually been using this one, which is their split ergo keyboard which I will be, uh, will be more prevalently featured in another sponsored video. With all that, I hope you have an absolutely beautiful day, and goodbye.